when we ingest alcohol, the toxic effects of alcohol disrupt those mood circuitries at first making them hyperactive. That's right, making them hyperactive. This is why people become really talkative. People start to feel really good after a few sips of alcohol, at least most people do. And then as they can ingest more alcohol or as that alcohol wears off, serotonin levels and the activity of those circuits really starts to drop. And that's why people feel less good. And typically what they do, they go and get another drink and they attempt to kind of restore that feeling of well-being and mood. Now, typically what happens is that as people ingest the third and fourth, maybe even the fifth drink, there's an absolute zero chance of them recovering that energized mood, right? Most people, as they drink more and more, will now start to feel more and more suppressed. The forebrain is now shutting down quite a lot. A lot of the motor cortical areas that control coordinated movement and deliberate movement start to shut down. So people start to slur their speech. People start to shuffle their feet. People forget their posture. People start to lean on things. People start passing out on couches. There's a great depression, not depression of the psychiatric depression sort, but a depression of alertness and arousal and eventually people will pass out. Now, I said most people because there's a subset of people that have gene variants or who are chronic drinkers or who are chronic drinkers and have gene variants that as they ingest the third and fourth and fifth drink, what happens? They become more alert. They start talking more. They feel great. They have all sorts of ideas about the fun they could have that night. And they're the ones that if you've ever fallen asleep at a party for whatever reason, or you're getting tired and you're yawning, you're looking around the room and like these people are still drinking and partying and they're having what seems to be this amazing time. Often, not always, those are the future alcoholics in the room, or those are the people that have a genetic predisposition for alcoholism, or those are the chronic drinkers, the people who have built up enough of a tolerance or who have the chemical genetic makeup such that increasing amounts of alcohol make them feel better and better and better. And of course, they too have a threshold beyond which their nervous system will start to get diminished and they'll pass out and fall over, etc. But that threshold is way, way higher than it is for most people. Now, this is important to understand and it's important to understand because I think everyone should know and recognize their own predisposition and kind of risk in terms of developing alcoholism. So exactly what happens when alcohol enters the brain that causes us to feel buzzed or drunk and in some individuals particularly energetic and happy. Alcohol affects different parts of the brain in different ways. Again, it does not connect to specific receptors but it does seem to have a tendency toward or an affinity for certain brain regions that are engaged in various ways of thinking and doing. One of the first things that occurs is that there is a little decrease in the activity of neurons in the prefrontal cortex, at least after the first or second drink. This region of your neocortex is responsible for thinking, making plans and possibly most important, suppressing impulsive behavior. Therefore, if you attend a party where alcohol is served and people are drinking, you'll notice that after a short while, the volume of people's voices will increase. This is because people are simply not paying attention to how loud they speak. So as soon as one person starts speaking louder, others will follow them. Everybody has experience going to a party and then stepping outside for a bit and realizing that they were yelling. You return home the next day with a sore throat. However, most of the time it's simply that you've been yelling all night to be heard since when the prefrontal cortex goes down. Additionally, you'll notice that individuals start gesturing more, getting up and down from their seats more often and moving about more. If there is music playing, people may even start dancing on their own. This is all due to the fact that certain regions of the prefrontal cortex ordinarily provide top-down inhibition. They are releasing a neurotransmitter called GABA onto various brain regions that are involved in impulsive motor behavior and thought patterns. So as a result, people will say things they want to say without giving them as much thought. 
डू थिंग्स दे वॉन्ट टू डू विदाउट गिविंग दैम एज मच थॉट और दे माइट नॉट इवन से वॉट दे वॉन्ट टू से एट ऑल सिंस वी आर ऑलरेडी डिस्कसिंग आल्कोहल्स इम्पैक्ट ऑन मेमरी एंड ब्लैकिंग आउट आई सिंपली मैंशन दैट आल्कोहल हैज अ वेरी पावरफुल इफेक्ट ऑन सप्रेसिंग द ब्रेन नेटवर्क रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर मेमरी क्रिएशन एंड प्रेजर्वेशन दिस इज वाई आफ्टर ड्रिंकिंग वी ऑफन फॉरगेट वॉट हैपन ऑन अ नाइट आउट द प्री फ्रॉन्टल कॉटेक्स एंड टॉप डाउन इनहिबिशन आर दस डिक्रीज वेन इंडिविजुअल्स ड्रिंक विच मीन्स दैट हैबिचुअल बिहेवियर एंड इम्पल्सिव बिहेवियर स्टार्ट टू ग्रो द फैसिनेटिंग पार्ट इज दैट दिस इज ट्रू इन द शॉर्ट टर्म सो आफ्टर इंडिविजुअल्स हैव वन और टू पर हैप्स थ्री और फोर ड्रिंक्स but it's also true that changes occur in the same circuits that drive habitual and impulsive behavior the more frequently people drink those who regularly consume alcohol say every thursday friday or saturday have altered neural circuits in their brains that regulate habit and impulsive behavior these modifications and strengthenings make those individuals more impulsive and habitual outside of drinking times and when they consume alcohol impulsive and habitual behavior tends to increase when addressing the consequences of alcohol this is something that isn't often brought up we all know that drinking too much may have bad consequences right can be harmful to judgment and motor coordination drunk driving is a horrible thing that can kill you or other people but it's uncommon to read about how even one or two nights of frequent drinking might alter brain pathways once again chronic drinking does not always include daily and nightly consumption it may be someone who only consumes alcohol on thursdays or fridays or only once a week having three or four drinks or perhaps more that person will experience changes in the neural circuits that enable habitual and impulsive behavior to occur more readily even when they are not drinking as well as a decrease in top down inhibition which will lead to an increase in impulsivity and habitual behavior because the break on those behaviors have been removed while they are drinking the brain circuits that regulate habitual behavior have more synapses thus the neural circuits in your brain that enable the execution of existing habits or rather the performance of actions you are already familiar with literally grow whereas the neural circuits or rather the number of synapses or contacts within the neural circuits that regulate behavior decrease why then does alcohol not eradicate the harmful bacteria in the gut well the bad bacteria from partially digested food frequently escape the gut before the alcohol can disrupt them so now you have leaks in the gut wall you've got the release of this bad bacteria you've got inflammatory cytokines and other things being released from the liver and they can enter the brain through something called a neuroimmune signaling the overall result is increased alcohol consumption since this disrupts the brain circuits that regulate how much alcohol is consumed therefore this is awful so you consume something that disturbs two systems the gut microbiota and it disturbs in two ways by killing the good gut microbiota and by allowing the bad bacteria to enter the blood stream you also have pro inflammatory cytokines coming from the liver and this converge or arrive in the brain and create a system in which the neural circuits lead to increased drinking that is a poor scenario and this is why people who regularly drink even if it's not a lot of alcohol again of the kinds of the drinking patterns i discussed before and certainly for those who are chronic heavy drinkers what you end up with is a situation in which you have inflation in several places in the brain and body and the desire to drink even more in order to further exacerbate that inflation and the gut leakiness In general this is a bad situation for the stomach liver and brain axis and it is particularly common in so called alcohol use disorder so when you are consuming alcohol yes you are consuming poison and that poison is transformed inside your body into a harsher toxin 
part of which is then transformed into calories that may be used to produce ATP and energy. Alcohol is also seen as having empty calories because despite the metabolically expensive nature of the whole process, the calories it produces have no obvious nutritional benefit. Although you can utilize it right away, there is no meaningful or efficient method to keep it. It is a true source of empty calories since it does not include any vitamins, amino acids or fatty acids. Although sugar is sometimes referred to as having empty calories, sugar is a far superior fuel source than alcohol or acetate. However, part of the alcohol you consume is converted into a stronger toxin and some of it is converted into a fuel source. Now it's crucial to realize that the toxin acetaldehyde itself which causes drunkenness or alcoholism what causes these effects. The fact that drinking is essentially a poison induced disturbance of your neurological circuits is something that I believe most people are unaware of. I want to underline that when individuals consume this poison and it is poison, the spectrum of symptoms is extremely distinct and you can accurately identify who has a tendency toward alcoholism and who is a more frequent drinker by the shape or the timing of the various impacts. Again, those folks are the ones who really need to be cautious about their propensity for alcoholism because they tend to feel more awake and enthusiastic every time they drink. They tend to get a real lift. They sort of become the life of the party and that lasts for a long time. Even if they aren't full-fledged alcoholics, such folks nevertheless need to exercise caution when it comes to how much they drink. Now obviously those who are consuming alcohol for the first time or who are not used to doing so need to be cautious about doing so for other reasons as alcohol may impair judgment and motor skills among the other things. But when you consider alcohol's biochemical consequences and the damage it does to the body, you realize that it always enters the stomach. When ethanol enters the stomach, the liver immediately begins the process of turning it into acetaldehyde and acetate. Some acetaldehyde and acetate eventually bridge the blood-brain barrier and reach the brain. Once again, the blood-brain barrier or BBB acts as a protective barrier surrounding the brain. Since alcohol is both water and fat soluble, it easily penetrates the blood-brain barrier and enters the environment of the brain. 